All right, so for this lecture, I want to actually implement, implement a reduced order model uh, using both model reduction ar architecture as well as the gappy POD type structure for interpolating uh, efficiently the, the nonlinearity so that we really build truly a R-dimensional reduced order model. So that's what we're going to go after here is to try to do that in practice and in code. Now, uh, reduced order models again, let's just highlight, remember, going from a high-dimensional model to some building a surrogate model, which is low-dimensional. So that's much easier to run, and so we're going to build those models today. The architecture is here. We're going to assume that I have some PDE, that when under discretization becomes some very high-dimensional, n-dimensional ODE system, generically represented by this, where there's some nonlinear components, Nonlinear uh, linear components and nonlinear components here. These are the linear components. In doing a simulation of the high, this high dimensional system, I take snapshots, do an SVD to find the POD modes I want to project into this low dimensional subspace. I do that through this operation right here, where phi of r is the r rank subspace I want to use. It comes from the PO, that are the POD modes, and in doing so. Here's your evolution dynamics of the R-dimensional uh, nonlinear dynamical system that comes out of this for the amplitudes of what's going on with those modes. Now, the linear part can be done very easily because I can do this computation of this here to be build an R by R matrix at one time expense. <clears throat> but here's where all the difficulty comes, which is the nonlinearity creates problems because now, when I do this projection here, I have to do these nonlinear inner products. <clears throat> and the nonlinear inner products, every time I take a step forward into the future, I have to take an inner product with this high dimensional state space. And so the, the system would never truly become low dimensional unless I find a way to interpolate a solution for this. And this is exactly what we've been focusing our effort on in this chapter is, Model reduction isn't just about finding a low dimensional subspace, it's also about finding a very good uh, interpolation scheme for projecting nonlinear terms. That's what we're really after. So uh, I'm going to show you in this lecture how to do dime, the dime algorithm actually, and the Q-dime is just a very simple extension of it that can be done as well for sampling locations. And I'll I'll highlight what you might do with that, but I'm going to focus on this dime algorithm, discrete empirical interpolation method. Okay, so here's the idea. It just comes down to this. I want to go from my high dimensional state space to this R dimensional state space through a projection matrix P, which is a measurement matrix. It's just basically rows of the identity. The question is, where should I sample? In other words, how do I construct that matrix P? We've talked about a lot of different architectures for doing it over the course of this chapter. You can randomly sample. You can try to minimize condition number. You can put locations at the max and min of the different uh, of the of the large of the dominant POD modes. Uh, you can also do these uh, dime I'm Q dime type algorithms, which is a different way to basically crush down the residuals of of of. So every measurement location you add is sort of in some sense optimal through a greedy approach of pushing down residuals as you build this subspace of measurements. So P is what we're after. That's what we want to construct. So how do we do it? Because really if we get a good P, we can get a good reconstruction. That's the goal of this is to have a P space which is a great interpolation space for the full thing. So what I'm going to do is move to a code. I'm going to run through an example. And through this example, I want to show you what this thing does and looks like and allows us to do. Okay, so let me push this down here, and here is the code. So what I'm going to solve is the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Uh, I used this model in the last uh, chapter, chapter 11, as a simple model. I'm going to look at the soliton solutions, and I want to build a reduced order model for this. So what I'm going to start off with is to solve this thing on a domain of size 40, so it goes from negative 20 to 20, 256 points. So right away that starts to tell you a little bit about the size and the domain and the dimensionality of my system. So I am solving, a two, I took this PDE system and I'm going to solve it now with 
by discretizing it into 256, uh, 256 discrete points. So now my differential equation system is dimension 256. So that's pretty small, but again, this is a, an exemplar. Uh, so I'm going to take the domain then, chop it up in 256 points. So my domain is a linear space. It goes from negative 20 to 20 in 257 points. And since I'm going to use periodic boundary conditions and an FFT method to solve this, use periodic boundary conditions, the last point's the same as the first, so I drop the last point. So the 257th point is out because it's the same as the first. I also have to define wave numbers since I'm using a spectral method with FFT. So FFT thinks you're on a 2 pi periodic domain. So I normalize by 2 pi over L and then define my wave numbers. So these are like cosine 1x, cosine 2x, cosine 3x. Those are the wave numbers that I put into here. And I'm going to solve this from time 0 to 2 pi with 61 points. Okay? So doing this, in fact, I'm going to do this and take n equals 2 for my soliton which is going to be a hyperbolic secant. So I showed this previously, and in fact, I'll show you what the results look like in a minute. This is a breathing solution that does this. So it's very simple dynamics. In fact, it looks like it's two or three dimensional subspace that you can actually find to, to model this on. In fact, I did that previously in chapter 11 to show that, you know, basically with two or three modes, you can model this whole system. So the idea is to because of that, you, know, you could trade out this 256 dimensional system down to a two or three dimensional system, right? So that's, that's the advantage of reduced order modeling is that you can collapse it down into this subspace, which is so, so much easier to use. And in fact, in the last chapter, I showed that you can actually write down the analytic solutions essentially for this, or you can write down the model very simply for this, for a two dimensional system. So if you solve that, let's talk about what comes next, because really at the end of the day, what we want to focus in is on actually what are the next steps for building this reduced order model and integrating this in uh, with, our, with our technique here. So what we're going to do is take the solution of that and stack it in a matrix X. So these are snapshots of the solution. U1, U2, all the way through, I had, I believe, 61 snapshots for this system. Okay, so I range this matrix of data, which are snaps out to my system, and then I SVD it. So I want to do an SVD right here. I take that SVD it. So now this is going to give me out my SVD modes or POD modes. The POD modes that I have out of the system come right out of this. And that's going to give me my space in which I want to project into. I'd encourage you to actually look back at uh, chapter 11, and I think it was 11.5, that my lecture there, I. I, I work this out directly just by hand, actually, to show how it works out. Um, but here, what we're going to do is a three-mode approximation. So we're going to take the dominant three modes. And so the rank I'm going to pick is R equals 3. So my psi, in other words, my POD modes I'm going to use are the first three columns of U. So when I do this SVD matrix, I'm just going to pull the first three columns that's the subspace I'm committing myself to. I'm going to work in that subspace spanned by those three modes. Nice thing is there are orthonormal, orthonormal modes, very nice to, to work with. I can also project the initial conditions that I had into that basis. So in other words, A is going to be a projection of the initial conditions, because remember, I'm trading out my U for an A. Right, so I have this U, U, which is this full state space n dimensional. A is now going to be a three by three ODE coefficient a one, a two, a three. Tell me the evolution of those modes. Okay, there's going to be a dynamical system doing this. So I'm going to project the initial conditions into A. So now I have the initial conditions of those of my three by three system that I want to work with. Now remember the dime algorithm from the last lecture involved taking the SVD of the nonlinear terms. So here's what I do. I take the nonlinear terms, there it is, of the matrix, absolute, ma absolute value of x dot squared dumps x, because the nano less is mod u squared u with an i in front. And so I take the SVD of this, and here are my, this is the specifically the SVD of the nonlinear terms. Remember that the dime algorithm, and you can look at the last section and do this. Uh, at chapter 12.5, the, 
that the DIME algorithm requires you to take two SVDs. The first SVD is of the full state space. The second SVD is isolating the nonlinearity and looking at the subspace that the nonlinearity itself is spanning. So this is what we're doing right here. It's taking that nonlinearity, looking at its subspace. And now we're going to chick pick the DIME sensor locations. And though this is going to be the algorithm, and you're going to have to look back at lecture 12.5 just if you want to follow along, but I'm implementing what we had talked about in that last lecture. So here it is. So the first thing you do in the DIME algorithm is you look at your subspace. You take your first mode spanning that subspace, the dominant first POD mode, and you look at the maximum. And that is the first sensor location. That's all I've done here. So what I've done is taken out the first column here of, of this thing and looking at the max of this. So here it goes, max of the absolute value of C. Okay, so this gives me the value of that maximum as well as the location of the maximum. So it tells me what the maximum value is, where it's located at. This is going to be the first location of my interpolation measurement position. So there it is. P is my measurement matrix and its location is n max. In other words, the P matrix starts off being all zeros. And then what I do is say, okay, go put in the first measurement location and put in a one there. Okay, so everybody's zero, but if it's a one, that means you're gonna get measured there. That's the one of the rows of the identity I've just put it in. That's the first sensor location. The second to R locations are then running through this code here, which is computing this residual. That's what we wanna do. You project your data onto the next mode, because remember, the modes are, if you had full state measurements, all the modes would be orthogonal, only be zero. However, the fact is, you're working with these subspaces, right? Or uh, you're working with these support spaces of the measurements. So the modes are non-orthogonal. So you project how much of this is into the next mode. So if you're at the rth, if you're at the nth location, you want to get the nth plus one sensor. You say how much is the nth location in that measurement subspace, or, or, uh, or project into the n plus one space. Okay, remember we're working on these subdomains now, measurement subspaces that we have. Okay, and then you compute the residual into the next direction. Where is it maximum? In other words, where's your biggest error happening if I add a direction, which is exactly what you're doing. You're walking down each of these SVD modes of the nonlinearity, and each time I want to add a mode, I just say, well, where's the maximum error in my measurement subspace, right, which is just the points that I'm measuring in, that's where you put a measurement location. And that's what you do here with this max of the residual, pick out a new position, you build your measurement matrix P now gets a new location and a new column added to it. Now once you measure it, what, so this is the whole algorithm, there you go. So now I've built my measurement matrix P. P now has our locations selected by this greedy algorithm that crushes down the residual. Okay, it's as simple as that to execute. By the way, I'll make the comment about QDIME. You replace this with just QR column pivot selection. So it's kind of nice. It's already built in the MATLAB. So that's, that's kind of all this gets replaced by one line of code that MATLAB has in there. Okay, but that's the DIME algorithm. Next thing you do, you build your projection of the nonlinearity. So now this is your projector. This is where you want to, this is the, these are the inner products that are going to project that nonlinearity down into this space. Here it is. Uh, in fact, I, I work, there you go. So th this is, this is your nonlinear projection matrix. And then so now uh, you can basically project all of your nonlinearity onto this space and also project it back onto the modes. So once you build a nonlinear projector, that's here, and then now you can interpolate. Remember that this here is the interpolation of the full state space. That measurement matrix P hitting the full state space to, to build you the low dimensional subspace. On the outside of the loop still, I also create, I, I also produce a the, uh, one time 
linear, build a linear projection matrix, which is an R by R matrix here, which is to project that linear operator onto your subspace psi hat and psi. So, okay, so you take the psi, you take the derivative of those two first derivatives. Uh, uh, so remember, it's psi transpose L psi. So you have to take the two, you take the linear operator, hit the psi, then you multiply the inverse psi. There it is. So that gives you a one-time cost of producing L, which is an R by R matrix. So I'm going to take L, and I'm going to take P psi, the projectors, and put them into the right-hand side, and now solve this 3 by 3 ODE system. The right-hand side itself, here's what it looks like, and it's, a, it's the right-hand side is for solving for A. So you, you have A coming in, you've produced the nonlinear terms here, and then you project onto the, the SVD POD modes, the normal SPD modes. So L times A, and L is this R by R matrix, and then here's your projection, the nonlinearity, and with this projector interacting with with, with, with this PNL. So there you go, that's the whole code. Um, I encourage you to download it. It's off the website, so you can play around with it. You can really get detailed into it. I mostly wanted to highlight it. I'm not gonna get too detailed into it. This is something I would walk you through, show the different pieces, but then, you know, code at this level, you wanna really look at this along with your formulas side by side to make sure that you understand each implementation piece. But between section 12.5 and 12.6, you have everything sitting right there in front of you to walk through the dime algorithm, the projection of the nonlinear space, as well as um, understanding how to implement it here in the code. So what I'll do is I'm gonna show you the results because often the results just look better on on these slides than they do actually on the computer here. And here's the result. Um, so what I'm gonna show you here is this panel is the full simulation. So that's, that's the full high dimensional simulation that you're trying to reproduce with some reduced order model. So it's a very simple dynamics, right? So when I took the SVD of this, and that was in chapter 11, right? You just find that could do, you could probably do a two mode expansion or a three mode expansion. Here I chose to do three. Uh, so here's the dynamics of this. Here is my low rank model. This is my reduced order model right here. This is a three by three ODE system that I project back onto the modes. And what modes am I projecting back onto? Where well, they are, mode one, two, and three. These are my SVD modes and I've looked into a domain negative four to four which is where these things are highlighted. And by the way, these three lines here, that say first, second, and third, are the locations of my interpolation points. So the only place I measured those points for constructing the nonlinear terms was at these three locations. Interesting, right? So it's telling you something, this greedy selection said, as long as I can have measurements at these three locations, I can compute the inner products of your nonlinearity with three measurements. And I'm going to give you an accurate representation because look, it, it it's totally nails it, right? So this is what's great. I've actually built a reduced order model that is three-dimensional all the way through, right? So once I build these things in the nonlinear projector, the linear projector, I put them in and I am done. I have this beautiful three-dimensional model that is an accurate proxy or surrogate for this n-dimensional model. And so I've saved myself two orders of magnitude in computation time with some upfront work about determining where I should place sensors, both for the linear and nonlinear portion. So this is a nice result. Code is all there for you to like take around, poke around with, and so it's a fully working code to so just see what the pieces are in MATLAB and it's not that, that hard to to, to look at and read. Um, so there you go, so that is the execution of Dime, and also I show in there like just what, what one change of line will do to give you QDime, okay? Everything can be found here at databookuw.com. The notes are here at Databook PDF, and all the code is there as well, so I would encourage you to sort of download the code, download the notes, and just walk through the pieces, because it's it's very nice, it's, you know, it's, it's a, 
significant piece of code up front to sort of get all the pieces together. Not that significant, but it's, it's there in terms of putting all the pieces together as upfront costs. And once you have it all, then you can run your models uh, very nicely. And then you have a, a way to have some confidence that you also can integrate this in a very simple system that's easy to use on, on, on MATLAB or Python.